It's the morning of February 25th, the day of the big fight. Now we'll see the craziest weigh-in in all boxing history. Over 400 people were present, including every prominent boxing writer from 17 countries and representatives of the major television and radio networks. But not one could believe his eyes or ears as Clay's conduct, to quote many of those present, defied description. Even as Liston's weight was being announced at 218 pounds, Clay was still making his presence verbally, if not painfully evident, to the relatively few boxing writers who picked him to win. oblivious to the remarks calculated to make him angry, calmly attempts to neutralize the challenger's screaming by a simple raising of two fingers, indicating to the press the number of rounds he intends to allow Clay to function from a standing position. As Clay's weight of 210 and a half pounds was being announced, Cassius was simultaneously announcing to Liston all of the terrible things that were going to happen to the champion that evening in the ring. After listening to Clay screaming for better than half an hour, the commission doctor, as well as many people present, thought Clay's performance was the result of his being terrified at the thought that he would actually face Liston this night. Just prior to the fight, Clay predicts Liston will fall in eight. However, Liston says round two will be the finale. is here at ringside, Miami Beach Convention Hall. We're almost all set to go for that world heavyweight championship fight. The puncher, champion Sonny Liston, the boxer, challenger Cassius Clay, and via theater network television in over 350 locations tonight, you'll be seeing this all-important fight. Of course, that's United States and Canada location-wise. And then by way of relay satellite in 15 European countries, will also be offering this world title go, one of the top sports events of the year round, along with the Kentucky Derby, World Series, and Pro Football Championships. Now, my telecast teammate tonight, the ring great, the all-time champion, Joe Lewis. Joe, the champion, Sonny Liston, will be coming out of his dressing room momentarily. You were in the spot. You defended 25 times successfully. Tell us, what kind of feeling do you think Sonny might have, what kind of feeling did you have in a big one? Well, uh, Steve, you know, I had this feeling, I guess, say 25 times, because I defended my title 25 times, so, uh, but I think that this fight will probably come up great with, with the fight yeah. with uh, Mike Smelling, because uh, it was a big fight, and everybody was looking at it, but as you know, Catch a Play had been a lot of talking, and there's been a lot of publicity about this fight, so I think that he's going to wonder how he's going to feel in the first round. Well, the first round's the big round, according to champion Joe Lewis, an all-time champion, as we said a while ago. And at the present time, Joe, uh, we see Sonny is coming out of his dressing room, uh, just leaving down toward the $20 section in this beautiful arena, coming into what looks like the $50 area. It promises to be an all-important fight, one where Sonny perhaps will want to get off fast, one where Cassius who incidentally is warming up right now, will also want to get off mighty fast. And there we see the spotlight on the world champion, 
Sonny Liston in his entourage, leading him down from dressing room to ring. A long walk down. Sonny with that hooded robe, the terry cloth white robe, uh, is being led by his advisor, Jack Nylon, Willie Reddish, Teddy King, and uh, some of the others in the group. Let's see what kind of hand he gets as he gets near the ring. Now he's near that, well, let's call it the golden circle. The golden circle, ladies and gentlemen, is the one in front of, he's walking directly behind it now, in front of the $50, $100, and then the auxiliary press, then the $150 section. And finally, Sonny keeps going toward that, what is the $200 per copy, seat per copy section. Now he's heading into the golden circle. Of course, uh, leading the way, some of his very, very close friends uh, coming in there, Sonny gives you that, uh, well, that great look. And there he comes up the ring stairs, Teddy King, first man through, the heavyweight champion with ropes being spread apart, bounces in, calm, cool, collected. And at the present time, both fighters are in over in the opposite corner of Sonny. Listen, uh, we see at this point the challenger. The challenger catches Marcellus Clay, 22 years of age, unbeaten. 19 straight going for all the marbles in the boxing business. And right now to the dapper ring announcer who will introduce some of the celebrities, the colorful Frank Freeman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Miami Beach, Florida, Miami Beach Convention Hall. While we're here, may I introduce you to a couple of boxers you've seen in the past, we'll probably see again in the future. The contender and former welterweight champion of the world, Louis Manuel Rodriguez. And from North Miami Beach, right here in Florida, the light heavyweight champion of the world, the dancing master, Willie Pastrano. Willie P. Willie Pastrano, who boxes an awful lot like Cassius Clay. And here's a heavyweight on the comeback trail. Five KOs in a row, gunning for a title shot, the popular Californian, Eddie Machen. Machen. Eddie, punching better than ever, doing exceptionally well. And real close to ringside, ladies and gentlemen, a man who has been acclaimed as the greatest fighter, pound for pound, three-time middleweight champion, Sugar Ray Robinson. You know what this spectacle is. You've seen it before. Ray with a, a, a great uh, tuxedo sort of suit on. Looks great. Looks perhaps younger than he's looked in a long time. Congratulated and wished Clay lots of luck. Did the same with Sonny. Says hello to the referee and now to the announcer. And doing, doing the commentary over television for theater, network, television. Probably one of the most beloved boxers of all time defended his title 25 times in his nine years as heavyweight champion, the Brown Bomber, Joe Lewis. Lewis. My colleague tonight, my broadcast partner, got a great hand, and why not? An all-time great. And on the other side of the ring, doing his bit for ABC Radio, the undefeated, retired heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano. Marciano. Rocky, very popular in the Southland, popular all over the country. Unbeaten, untied. Back to the ring announcer. This bout is under the auspices of veterans of foreign wars, post number 3559. Under the promotion of Dundee McDonald Enterprises and the supervision of the Miami Beach Boxing Commission, consisting of Carl Gardner, Vice Chairman, Al Sherman, Dan Raw, Eddie Lassman, and Chairman Morris Klein. The officials assigned the doctor, the chief medical examiner, Dr. Alexander Robbins. The timekeeper is Gus Reno accounting for the knockdowns, Scotty Lang. Judging, Gus Jacobson. 
Bonnie Lovett and the referee, Barney Felix. This bout, 15 rounds for the heavyweight championship of the world. The challenger from Louisville, Kentucky, wearing white trunks with red stripes, weighing 210 and one half pounds, the former Olympic light heavyweight champion, Cassius Clay. Clay. And his opponent from Denver, Colorado, weighing 218 pounds, wearing the black trunks with the white trim, the heavyweight champion of the world, Charles Sonny Liston. Liston. 15 rounds, two more bouts will follow. I want a clean bout, men. In the event of a knockdown, a man at his down must take an eight count. Man standing up will go to a neutral corner while I start counting. And do not resume boxing until I tell you to do so. Now, I want a clean bout. When they order you to break, stop punching and step back. Good luck. Shake hands. All set now. World heavyweight boxing title on the line. 31-year-old Sonny Liston, 22-year-old Cassius Clay. Sonny the champion, Cassius the challenger. Sonny 218, Cassius 210 and a half, a seven and a half pound weight pool. Referee, the capable Barney Felix. Brought to you by Theater Network Television. Cassius Clay on the move as we see, looking to get Sonny to run. Carrying his left hand dangerously low. Note that the champion, Liston, the aggressive man, Ooh. a good heavy shot dug under the heart. Sonny has to set the pace. That's the way it looks at the outset. Cassius, awkwardly fast. Good long left lead that might keep the champion a bit off balance. Slippery. Play still in the danger zone in that he's keeping his hands low, but you'll notice one thing if you don't mind. He's at long range with the hands low. We're halfway through round one. Close range, if we look closely, although Barney Felix does want them apart at this point because the hands were tied, Sonny will be the guy that will keep mauling away. One minute more in the first round. Sonny seems to be trying to slip those left leads. Can't do it too successfully because... The challenger is jabbing all over. Body, head, and right hand. The best punch in the fight so far. down to the closing second of this first round and the long left lead is making the difference so far by Mr. Clay. Ladies and 
gentlemen, we're looking in with our overhead camera into the corner of Cassius Clay, who is still doing the talking. He's still, he's breathing a bit hard. Barney Felix, the referee, did not stop that round when that bell sounded. Perhaps the referee didn't hear it. Champion Joe Lewis. Going, look at the guy yawning. Tell us what you think at the end of one. Well, Steve, I think this was the greatest round of any, of any fight we've seen in a long time because I think Clay uh, completely outclassed on this in this round. Completely outclassed, Joe, with his speed, his awkward style, his boxing, his natural ability. What did it, in your opinion? Well, uh, I hope that Clay don't get too much confidence in the dude. He's going to get knocked out. Joe referred to overconfidence. This can happen. is actually not headhunting at this point. He's content to rip toward the body, trying to bring the guard down and then go upstairs. You know, when the body goes, the head follows. Watch out. But this youngster has his own style, and it's confusing for the champion to fathom this early in the fight, at least up to now. Halfway through this second round. Watch closely. The champion is clubbing away, and then, of course, the challenger has to move him away. Less than one minute more in the second round. With 30 seconds to go in the second round, Liston wants to pump that jab to set up his other punches. He wants to use it as a left lead, a lead to other shots if he can get this kid to stand still and then rip the body. Ten seconds more in the second round. The crowd's going to roar in a few more seconds, that's for sure. <laughs> moving, moving on over to the champion's corner, Sonny Liston. Joe, Joe Lewis, tell us now what they might be telling Sonny. How will he have to fight in round three? Well, I, I'm sure that, that uh, Willie Red is telling Sonny to forget about... Uh, had to play his head because you know he pulled back too much and, and it's much too fast for that but i think some time we're going to body for a while the old saying those kill the body the head to die now tell me this in your opinion and you're very close to sonny uh, and you're close to both guys uh is sonny relaxed is he tense what do you think joe well i think sonny uh, right now looks like that this last round i think it made him a little bit more t t a tense because uh the first round i think he this play really uh showed a lot of a lot of moving a lot of what he could do you know all right, we're getting set. Thank you, Joe. We're getting set now for round number three. List on play.
another jarring right hand that time, folks. Another one. Sonny wobbles. Sonny wobbles. Cassius has him hurt. Sonny is... No, no. Is, is talking to... below his left eye, he has a cut below the eye, and he's getting hit with all the punches in the book. Halfway through, halfway through round three. Sonny bleeding slightly from the nose also. seconds remaining in round three. Hold the phone. Cassius is a bit hurt. Sonny, still aggressive, very durable. right in tight. We're going into Sonny's corner. Joe, I don't know whether you can see it. Look closely. Look hard. They're working on the cut below the left eye. It's very difficult to get a shot, but what do you think Sonny's condition, as Joe Polino works on the cut, would be right now? Well, uh, Steve, uh, that ground looked bad for Sonny, especially when he was putting all, the, all that flurries on Sonny, but I think for the last uh, minute of the round, I think Sonny looked right pretty good. One pointed question. One pointed question with regard to the other fella, fella called Cassius Clay, now that we get set for round four. Uh, do you think Cassius tired a bit, or what happened a bit toward that last minute of the round? That's hard to say. That's hard to say. But, but Sonny did, but Clay did talk to Sonny. to point out the champion is strong durable takes the good shot however he is being outmaneuvered at most points because this fella has that awkwardly fast style of going side to side moving the upper part of his body
45 seconds to go in the fourth round. Sonny has some puffiness below his right eye now. Than a minute to go in this fourth frame, fourth round. Ooh. The list and hook started out as a jab, turned it short to a good hook. minute more in round number four. We're going over to look in the Cassius Clay's corner, and let's go back to uh, Joe Lewis. Joe, we'll get that shot right into the corner. Look at him. What do you think is going through this youngster's mind? He's 12 minutes into the fight. Well, he's talking a lot now. I don't know who he looks like. He's arguing with his with his with his trainers. Uh, uh, you know, but I don't know. Uh, Clay, I think he's getting more comfortable as the fight goes along. So getting I, more confident. I, I think so. As long as the fight goes, more comfortable he would be. That's Angelo Dundee that he was arguing with, Joe. Angelo now is telling him off a little bit while he gets him ready. Is the fellow surprising you? Is, is Sonny surprising I, I think that I think that uh, Clay is surprising the whole world uh, of, of going along with, with Sonny. And not only he's showing such to be in a good fight. Thank you, champ. Getting ready for number five. Something wrong with Clay now. Uh, something wrong with Clay. Uh, something wrong with Clay. I see that, Joe. Eyes. His eyes are bothering him. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't know exactly what happened. They're yelling from Cassius Clay's corner. Something got in his right eye. Uh, however, he's blinking badly. Sonny's going to try to part on. Four seconds 
remaining in the fifth. Only 10 seconds remaining as Sonny still moving in. Cash is still bouncing punches away, blocking them. Cassius Clay, Joe, was continually complaining about his eyes. What could have happened? Could it have been what? something on the sponge or the towel? It could have been something. Uh, you think that they had some kind of fads or something uh, that, you know, that they got into the sponge? You know? Well, there's a rule that uh, they're, they're stopping them from having any phase of collodium or things like that. It could have been some Vaseline that Angelo was putting on his forehead and nose. That's right. They That's what been. it looked like I, to me. I know when they wiped his face with that towel, then he started hollering then, so... Our... Joe, our creepy peepee camera, handheld, is, is taking us right into the corner of play. We're trying to see what they're doing, and now we're getting that overall shot. He seems okay. Dundee seems to nod toward him. Uh, we're getting ready for number six. Did you think it was going this long? I sure did. I think the whole country didn't think it was that long. on that one. Sonny does have 30 legs. With slightly less than a minute more in the sixth round, the champion has slowed down a bit. The tempo has slowed in the fight. <laughs> Only 30 seconds to go in the sixth round. Sonny can't seem to slip or knock down that jab effectively. Cassius, Cassius throws it from all angles. Very tricky left lead, left jab. Seconds remaining in the sixth. Crowd's now cheering the challenger. Let's get over to our champion, Joe Lewis. Joe, looking in towards the champion's corner. He's still standing up. They're going to make him sit down. 
What do you think is going on in Sonny's mind at this point? Well, I think Sonny's now begin to worry now. At least his opponents begin to worry now because I, I think that they feel now that, that they have all the comfort he needs and go home to defeat, defeat uh, Sonny. So I think that the corner now begin to worry a little bit now. Now they're working, as we know, with our camera shots in there below the left eye. They've already worked below the right eye. There you see them. Joe Polino trying to keep that cut closed. Uh, do you feel as though Sonny being busted up a little bit, puffed up a little bit around the face, will this make a difference in Liston's thinking? Well, it has to make a, little, uh, a difference because Liston, now, I think he, he don't see too well out both his eyes now because they're pretty well puffed up. And I think Clay got all the comfort he needs now, so I think that he, he can't even go on winning now. They might be stopping it. That might be all, ladies and gentlemen. Get up there, Joe. Get up there. Get up in the ring. Sonny left the doctor stopped the fight because Sonny had sold 
the left, left shoulder shelf, out, out of the socket. Out of the socket. Yeah, uh, Camp, did this ever happen to you when you were in the ring? Never did, because it, it, it do happen to quite a few fighters, though. It does, I know so this. As you know, Sonny was missing a lot of left shoulder. But why was he missing? Was it the target? Was it the, right, because, the slippery up part of yeah, his body? Yeah, well, because Clay will pull it back and off his tall, see? So, and, and, so that's why he sold it out. That's how he sold it out. He threw, it, doctor, threw it out. Would not let him that continue. was Dr. Alexander Robbins who diagnosed it, yes. Dr. Uh, Robert Bennett from Detroit. He yeah, and Dr. Bennett, Bennett also yeah. in the corner. Yeah. Dr. Bennett, who was Sonny's... Uh, uh, physician. Right, you know, and that's the story fight. there. Now, we're watching Cassius Clay, well, Joe, leave the, the auditorium at this point. I don't want you to leave. Cassius Clay is going down the aisle. The crowd is heading toward his dressing rooms. Harold Conrad, one of the top writers in the nation, uh, also thought that perhaps this would go in a major upset. Harold was writing some publicity, well, and I honestly thought he was just giving us a publicity story. See, I must say that they're probably the biggest upset in history of boxing. Well, now look, let me let me talk about ring upsets, if you don't mind, champ, while we're still looking over at Cassius, talking to other people, uh, foreign broadcasts and so forth. Joe, uh, Jim Braddock beat Max Bear at about 10 to 1 as a 10 to 1 underdog. Uh, then there was another, oh, I don't know, way back, uh, Corbett beat Sullivan. They tell me, although I don't think I was around. Maybe you think I was, but... Big, big upset. Do you call this one? He entered the ring at about one to seven or one to eight underdog. Would you call this well, the biggest upset, regardless of the odds in the I history think, of the heavyweight division? I think this is the biggest upset for, in the championship division. For and, and for championship fight, fight. For the heavyweight division, I think that's the biggest upset. The biggest because, upset. Because uh, I think Lester probably had been rated by most of the people in America, and he was the greatest heavyweight champion of all time, would have been the heavyweight champion, the heavyweight champion. Sonny is, is yeah. durable, and good also, puncher, you're right. they had rated him that, they, that he probably was, was so far over the rest of the top of the heavyweights in the, in, in the in pool of boxing today. So I think this has got to go down at the biggest upset in the history of boxing. Biggest upset in the history of boxing. Well, I tell you now, as uh, Cassius did say, Angelo Dundee, his trainer, his advisor, also did say that they would go for a return go. Do you feel now the American public should clamor for it? What do you think? Well, I think if, if they have a return match, I think that it would start in the, in the stadium in the world. Because, Any state? Because well, I, I just... think, let's say that I think that the American public, you know, and also the, all the world, all the American public. Well, I just got they the nod. The field. I, I just got the nod from Ed Lastman, World Boxing Association, and Art Heinemann, well, Executive Steve, Secretary. They would okay Steve, the return. Steve, I like, Steve, I like to say we'll play back with you. Joe, great to be with you on Theater Network Television. Ladies and gentlemen, from Miami Beach Convention Hall, on behalf of Joe Lewis and yours really, truly, Steve Ellis, we saw the biggest upset, as Joe pointed out, in heavyweight history, and we'll just say that's the story from Florida.